So in the video, we're going to talk a little bit about how to navigate around it and how to get files out to people. So here's an assembly we made over the summer. My son and I, we made a catapult and maybe I just need to get one part here out to somebody. You know, like uh, in our case, in the classroom, a teacher might say to you, hey, can, can you export that part to me? Uh, or it may come out as you need help with a part, right? Maybe you've made a mistake or you can't figure out how to do something. And the teacher might just say, you know, just export the part to me. Because when you export the part, it's easier for the teacher to see what's going on. I mean, we can we can go in there and look at it and we can find out exactly what we need to take care of. All right, so let's get started with it. But let's say this brace right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I know that that's the part I need. So when I click on it, over here on the left, so over here, it kind of puts this squiggly line under it, right? Puts this line under it, and that lets me know that that's the part I'm dealing with. So I'm just gonna right click on that. And what I'm gonna do is say export. And it's pretty simple. It depends on what kind of file that the person is looking for. If, if you're just looking for the person to make some edits in Fusion itself, you just wanna leave it that way. Okay, you just want to leave it as F3D because that's the Fusion file. In my case, it's set up to go to my downloads folder. So I just click export. There are other file types. Another common file is the step file. What step files are, are kind of interchangeable between CAD programs. So if I need to go to Inventor, or if I need to go to SolidWorks or Tinkercad or any other kind of program, even on shape, step files are going to open. I, the the issue with step files is that I'm not going to get like the part history and all that. That that's uh, kind of dependent on the program we use. So if a teacher says export that, give it to me in Fusion. Now you go right there. Okay, step there you go. Okay, and then you just click export, and that's going to send it to that folder. Let's also take a look at the file structure over here. So I'm going to hit the home button. This takes me out to what I like to refer to as kind of my root directory of fusion okay so helpful to stay organized like i know all this nhs stuff this is for school any personal things here's some personal projects right so i'm going to put personal things in there like here's some things for the gopro i made over the summer i made an iu logo for our fish tank right, we did a hot tub piece uh years ago now and then here's my project lead the way folder. So when I train other teachers, I use this folder a lot, right? It's very helpful to stay organized. It really does make a difference because, you know, you got to think as you go through the school year, you are going to acquire many, many files throughout the year. So maybe I need to 3D print this lever. So again, I kind of highlight it. I just kind of click on it because I can't remember what all these are. You know, I did a pretty decent job naming them. But there it is. Lever's got that blue line under it, right? There's that blue line. That thing's a pretty important piece there. So I've got the lever. What I'm going to do is right click on it. And I'm going to say save as mesh. This is if I want to 3D print. So save as mesh. Okay. Right now, I choose STL. It truthfully doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, 3MF is being developed. It's, it's uh, not quite developed on all slicers yet. So right now, I just tell the kids, hey, stick with the STLs. Doesn't matter which one. Now, my printer uses millimeters, and most printers do. But you may occasionally have to come in here and change that over to inches. Okay? It depends on your printer and how it's set up. Most printers deal with millimeters, so they deal with metric. And then for refinement, I always choose high. I haven't really found that that makes any kind of a difference. There are other options there, but really keep it simple so that when you guys do this, it's really simple. So you'll go there, you'll say STL, you'll say millimeter, and you'll click OK. When you do that, it's going to pull up your computer and it's going to say, where do you want to save this STL? Now what I found is if you go in there and you put it on your print slicer and it's really tiny or really huge, that probably means that you need to flip this over. So if I had millimeter and it came in there and it wasn't even close to the right size, I need to do inches. 